Morning. Um, let us do this question paper. It is a grade 10 accounting paper. So on the left of God, the information booklet and the question paper on the right. You will notice that financial statements should take us 48 minutes and it is out of 18 marks in total. So we're going to be focusing on that. So here we provided with information relating to adventure outfitters. So you're provided with the pre-adjustment trial balance of adventure outfitters. Adventure outfitters sells camping gear and hiking equipment and offer survival skills course which they charge a fee for. So they sell items goods that they sell at a profit in, but they also provide a service and they generate income from that service you need to be careful when you recognize income from a service it will not have cost of sales you will only have cost of sales when you are selling an actual product and you have increased it by a markup now when I answer such questions, I normally start with the nominal accounts section. And this is the information that you will record in the statement of comprehensive income. So we have been provided with this calculation space. And according to this, it says refer to the information relating to adventure outfitters. We need to prepare the statement of comprehensive income for adventure outfitters. For the year ended, so this is very important. It's very important for you to know in which year you are working in. We have the statement of income for the year ended the 31st of October 2024. Now that tells you that the beginning of the year was the 1st of November 2023. Now I will just record everything from this pre-adjustment trial balance. And I will always start with the nominal. So with the nominal, so I'll start with that sales, which is one million. Four hundred and twenty thousand. And from this, you need to minus your debtors allowances from the pre-adjustment trial balance, which will be that 31,940. Cost of sales figure is given to you as 740,000. So I've done sales, I've done... Um, I've done debtors allowances, I've done cost of sales, and interest on fixed deposit will be recorded at the bottom of your income statement just after operating profit, and we've got discount allowed, it's there for you, so uh, this is recorded, discount allowed is recorded, Discount received, it is not recorded. So I will include that here. And our discount received will be 13,960. And we have interest on overdraft. That is your interest expense. You will add it here. It will be 4,414. And once you've recorded everything that is in the pre-adjustment trial balance, I'll go straight to my adjustments. And according to the first adjustment, this is adjustments and additional information. It says here maintenance and repairs were done to the shop at a cost of 10,000. So this is maintenance and repairs that were done, which is an expense by the way. 
at a cost of 10,000. So this should increase our expense as it has been done. Now, the bookkeeper incorrectly charged this to London Buildings. We need to correct the error. So this was charged to London Buildings. It means that it was added to London Buildings. So what do we need to do? We need to minus it from London Buildings and add it to the correct account, which is maintenance and repairs. So this is just a simple correction of error. Because it was added to London Buildings, we need to minus it from London Buildings. And because it was never added to maintenance and repairs, we need to add it to maintenance and repairs. There is no note three, which is a tangible asset note here. If there was, I will simply subtract that 10,000 from London Building. Because there wasn't here, I need to only add it to repairs and maintenance. So our repairs and maintenance will go up by 10,000 rand. Okay. And then adjustment number two says an amount of 2,874 received from a debtor must be reversed. The key word is that this amount was received from a debtor and it needs to be reversed. The amount was originally received in settlement of the account, which is 3,000. This will actually affect three accounts. It will affect bank. This is because our bank originally increased by 2,874. I'm going to check if we have trade and other um, cash and cash equivalent. I mean, oh, we do. Okay. So to our cash and cash equivalent, because we added, we previously added the 2,874, we now need to subtract it from our bank because it was added when we received the money. But we need to reverse this. To reverse means you are undoing it. And to undo this from your bank, you will subtract that 2,874. And because this was in for a payment of 3,000, it was for a debt amounting to 3,000 rand. That means the difference between that 2,000 874 and um, and the amount that was received will be discount so how much will our discount be it will be this 3000 your minus 2874 it will give you 126 so this was originally a discount that was allowed to a debtor. So now, because the payment or the receipt must be reversed, that discount is no longer an expense. So it reduces our discount allowed expense. So from discount allowed, you will simply minus that 126. So I've recorded the 2,874, I've recorded the 126, which was the discount that was allowed. Now I need to record the actual debt and that will affect our trade debtors, okay? So normally what we do is that when a debtor pays us, we reduce our debtor's control by the total amount that the debtor is owing us or is paying, including the discount. So from your trade debtors, you will subtract. In this case, we subtracted the 2,874 because we thought we received it from a debtor. Now we have to add it back, 2,874. So we need to reverse the receipt. That means that the debtor will be owing us more. And then we need to add...
All right, as I said, we need to add the discount that was allowed because initially we subtracted the entire amount, which is 3,000. So we need to add it back, the entire amount. I need you to understand when a debtor pays us, we reduce their account by the actual amount of money that they paid us. We also reduce it by the discount that we are allowing them, that we are giving them. So if we have to reverse that, we need to add the payment we thought we were going to receive from them. We also need to add back that discount because the discount was given due to the fact that we received the payment. So if we reverse the payment, we also need to reverse the discount, which will be that 126 rand. Is this clear? All right. Let us look at number three. Number three says that an advanced survival skills course was cancelled due to poor weather. Customers were given cash refunds of 2,600 from petty cash. Remember it said it earlier on that we provide survival skills course, which is a service. This is not for goods sold. We are selling a service. It won't have cost of sales. And because we are selling a service, it's either income we recognize from providing a service, it's either we call it a service rendered, or fee income, or current account. Let me see what we have here. It has been given to us as a fee income. So what has happened in number three is that the bill cause was cancelled due to poor weather and customers were refunded from petty cash. Now, this means that the income that we initially received, we need to cancel it. We need to reverse it. So that 2,600 has been included in our fee income. Now we need to exclude it. So from our fee income, I am going to subtract that 2,600. Now, because this is income that we have not earned, it will also affect our petty cash. So our petty cash will be reduced by the 2,600 because we are making a payment to customers that already paid for those survival skills costs. Okay, so that will be for adjustment one and adjustment two and adjustment three. Adjustment four says that we need to provide for outstanding interest on fixed deposit for the current financial year. Interest is not capitalized. The full fixed deposit will mature on 30 April 2025. When you look at the fixed deposit, the fixed deposit is sitting at 70,000 rand and the interest rate on that is 8%. I will highlight it. So to calculate interest on this, you will just take that 70,000 and multiply it by 8% per annum. It will give you interest on fixed deposit for the entire year, which will be how much? So when you take 70,000, you multiply it by 8%. it gives us 5,600. So that 5,600 is the interest on fixed deposit that we need to have and recognize or earn for the current year. But when you look at this, our interest on fixed deposit is given to us as 2,400. Meaning that there's outstanding interest on fixed deposit that we have not yet received. That outstanding interest on fixed deposit, how do we get it? You will simply take 5,600 minus 2,400. This will give you 3,200. So we are going to add that 3,200 to our interest on fixed deposit. It's accrued income. 
it's income that we have earned but we have not yet received so we are going to include that in trade and other receivables as accrued income accrued income is income that is owed to us we have earned it but we have not yet received that so the amount will be three thousand two hundred all right that will be for number four Let's go to number five. It says that stationery costing 500 was ordered and paid for during October 2024, but was not delivered due to a driver shortage experienced by the supplier. So that stationery, the fact that we have ordered it, it means it was added to our stationery expense. However, we have not yet received the stationery. So there was no way we can recognize it as an expense because we only expense stationery or consumables that we have used. This one, we have not received it. So there's no way we could have used it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to my stationery and i will subtract that 500 rand because it won't be part of our expense we can't expense it we can only expense the stationery that we have used now that because we have ordered it meaning that we have actually paid for it yet we have not received it it is regarded as a prepaid expense so our prepaid expense will be that 500 rand because we have ordered, meaning we have paid for it, but we have not yet received it. All right. Is everyone happy? Are we good? That was number five. So number five, done. Let's go to number six. Number six says, Telephone account for October 2024, which is 1,220, has not yet been paid. Okay. Because they said it has not yet been paid, however, it's a telephone account for October 2024. That, to me, sounds like an accrued expense. It means that we have used the telephone for the month, but we have not yet paid for it because it says it's an account for October. October is in the current financial year. I am going to add that 1,220 to our telephone, but we have not paid for that. So it qualifies to be an accrued expense. So accrued expense is what we owe. It arises when we have used services of somebody else, but we have not yet paid for those services. So we owe that person. We have incurred the service, but we have not yet paid for it. So that will be recorded in payables. It becomes a payable. It's an expense that is payable. And we are going to put it here as telephone. Actually, let me not use telephone payable. Let me just use our code expense so that I can be able to include all accrued expenses. And the amount will be 1,220. Okay, number six, done. All right. Um, please do come back and try to do adjustment. Seven up to 14, you just have to complete this. Okay. See you soon.